go tilting at windmills all over the world. We must take care of our own nation and our own sons and daughters first. We love our children as much as you love your own. You know as we do that family is the foundation of American life. We know that your husband, our president, cares about family, so we know he cares about us. Your husband is a man of action. Out of respect to Cindy Sheehan and all the other sons and daughters who have given their precious lives in Iraq, a meeting with Cindy would show your husband's leadership and compassion for us as military families. Thank you for doing this for us. Sincerely, Mimi Evans. I volunteered in a civilian hospital where there was a 24-hour steady stream of people in all stages of life and death. Mothers grieving as well. One story in particular I'd like to share because I think as mothers, a beautiful young Iraqi woman came into the hospital, pregnant. One of her arms had been blown away in a bomb blast. They decided to take the baby by cesarean. Fortunately, it was almost full term, so it appeared that the baby would be all right. In the process of the bombing, her other arm was damaged, and she did lose her other arm. And when I would go into her room to help her, she would cry, I can't hold my baby. I can't hold my baby. But the women here with arms, whose sons will never return, with poor daughters, can also say, I can't hold my baby. I can't hold my baby. So thank you. Thank you, children. But let us never forget there are grieving mothers in Iraq and around the world from the action. I'm reading this letter for Karen Red Rennick from Austin, Texas. Dear Laura, I'm a mother of an 11-year-old boy. I love him with my entire essence, my soul. I think now that I am a mother, I have an unspoken connection with mothers everywhere and mothers who have lived since motherhood began. I feel the sorrow as well as the utmost joy that mothers experience as they tend their children and watch them grow into beautiful human beings. To suddenly have this constant outpouring of love for a living, breathing miracle shattered by death is indescribable in words, but it is felt in every cell of a mother. I am certain that you too feel this timeless connection with mothers of all the time and therefore understand Cindy's sorrow. Please, as a mother, deploy your husband to share a moment with Cindy and then help him to end the senseless killing of so many mothers' children. With love, Karen Rennick, Austin, Texas. So we just got handed another huge stack of letters and they said they can't print them all in time because the printer cartridge keeps dying because <laughs> there are so many letters that are coming in. <laughs> and when you read these letters, one is more beautiful than another. And I think we're going to have to do a book called Dear Laura from the Mothers of America. Yeah! Um, there's one in particular I wanted to read. And this is thanks to Patricia here, who wrote to a friend of hers, Joyce Lucy, just this morning and said we were going to be taking letters to Laura Bush, did she want to contribute? So Joyce wrote us back and said, I quickly dashed off a letter as I was running off to the hospital. I just wanted to be there with you as you delivered letters to Laura Bush. It's a little bit long for dashing off a letter quickly, but bear with me please while I read it. Dear Mrs. Bush, I am writing to you from my heart as a mom. You have two beautiful 23-year-old daughters. Try to imagine the unthinkable happening. 
you lose one of them forever. How do you think you'd feel? Let me bring you into my world for a moment. I too once had a beautiful 23-year-old child, only he was a boy. He was a charming, intelligent young man with an engaging smile. He loved his family and we loved him. He was my parents' only grandson. He was the middle child with a sister two years older and one two years younger. This young man was born Jeffrey Michael Lucy on March 18, 1981, was born. I still find myself unable to breathe for a moment when I talk about Jeff in the past tense. Jeffrey is no longer a part of our holiday gatherings, nor our family vacations. We no longer have the luxury of hugging our son or worrying about him because that goes along with parenting. Jeff's address has changed. He now resides at Island Palm Cemetery. He will forever be my baby boy, just as your girls will forever be your babies. But my son will never have a wife or a family of his own. We will never know what he might have aspired to, what he might have offered this world. He was cheated out of the simple joys of life. He will never have an opportunity to meet his first niece who will be born in the next few weeks, and we need to know why. Jeffrey joined the Marine Reservists when he was a freshman in college. Bill Clinton was president. We were not at war. We are not a military family, and I was terrified for my son's safety from the moment he signed. But the, recru the recruiters do a good job selling the service, but failed to give them the whole picture. Jeffrey found out the hard way with his life. This administration and all its wisdom decided that our country was in great danger from an imminent attack and invaded Iraq in March, only to find out there were no weapons of mass destruction and no connection to September 11. 800 plus and counting. 1,800 plus and counting. Jeffrey and how many others are not counted in this number? For you see, Jeffrey struggled for several months from PTSD when he came home from Iraq. We watched helplessly as he began to experience daily vomiting, nightmares, night sweats, startled responses, social anxiety, inability to focus. Our Marine feared going to the very people that put him in this situation. He begged us not to inform the Marines. Is that how we care for our troops? We put faith in the VA system and now and found they too were not prepared to handle Jeff's situation. Our son suffered in his world of pain and darkness while we tried in vain to get him help. This once happy strong man took his own life on June 22nd, 2004. How do you think your husband would feel, Laura, if he went down to the cellar and found Barbara or Jenner hanging from a garden hose? My husband was and remains devastated. Would your husband and his advisors be so insistent on staying the course if their sons and daughters were the next in line to leave for Iraq? Would you be quiet if it was your daughter's life in jeopardy? I would hope not. If it is every citizen's duty to question an action that involves the safety of our young men and women, it is and will always be the responsibility of our elected re officials to respond to our questions. Our loved ones have made the ultimate sacrifice being on the battlefield or resulting from being on the battlefield. Our pain is real and it goes deep and it will follow us for the rest of our lives. Please encourage your husband to listen to those who have traveled so far to ask their questions. If he feels he is on the right course, the answer should flow easily. Help us understand what our children died for. The words of a song my son listened to on the last weeks of his life sum up where Jeffrey was in June of 2003. Whatever happened to the young man's heart, swallowed by pain as he slowly fell apart. Please answer our questions. Joyce Lucy, proud mother of corporate Jeffrey Michael Lucy, reservist.